how I would learn to code if I had to start over. I know that there are several videos on this particular topic. And so this is my take on this very important first step in entering the coding world. So step number one is to choose a programming language to start out. And I know that there's so many available languages out there and it's simply overwhelming, but don't let that stop you. Don't let analysis paralysis hinder you from taking that first step. Because if you think back, you're going to realize that choosing language A or B, whichever it is, will help you to venture into this very exciting world of coding. And also the language that you're going to select will really depend on how you're going to apply coding. For example, if you want to create websites or web applications, then you could select a programming language that will allow you to do that. For example, JavaScript, HTML, CSS. If you're venturing into data science, there's Python and there's R. And so choose a language that you think you could use to create awesome projects that will help you to achieve what you want. However, if you're still blank and you don't know which language to start from, then I would like to suggest Python. From many of the developer surveys, Python has been consistently ranked as one of the top languages that are in use. And this is due to the fact that Python allows great flexibility in that you could also build web applications, websites, you could build machine learning models, you could automate projects or tasks on your computer, and also the general workflow of many mundane tasks. And so choose Python if you don't know where to start, and you'll thank me later. Now that you have a programming language that you want to get started with, the second step here is to find the available learning resources that you're going to use to achieve that goal. So there are several free resources out there. For example, there's Free Code Camp, which has an excellent video tutorial on their YouTube channel. And they also have free certification programs on various topics in web development and also in Python programming and also data analytics. Kaggle Learn is also a great free platform for you to learn about data science, how to use various Python libraries like pandas and also data visualization libraries and simply how to build models. And best of all, it's for free. Another great resource is the Geeks for Geeks, which provides an amazing website that teaches all of the major topics in programming like Python, JavaScript, CSS. And one of the most important resources that I think that you'll find helpful is YouTube. YouTube has an immense amount of YouTube channels that teaches coding for free. And there's channel like, as I mentioned, Free Code Camp, Tech with Tim, Kenji, Tina Huang, Alex the Analyst, and so much more. All right, and so now that you have some of the learning resources available to you, the third step is to start with the basics. And I know this is often overlooked and it might seem trivial. And oftentimes when we're starting out, we're eager to learn as much as possible. We want to get as much results as possible. However, if we don't solidify our basic knowledge, is going to come back and haunt you. So how can you exactly do that? So for example, when you're learning a new function or syntax, try to use that on some of the real world problems that you see around you. It could be your own data projects, your passion projects. For example, if you want to analyze Spotify data of your own listening history, and you're learning about sorting lists in Python, then why don't you try to sort your song history list in all possible ways, or sort artist names, for example. So work on projects that you think are interesting to you because it will help you to stay motivated because learning new topics, particularly programming languages, is a very tough endeavor. And if you are able to apply what you have recently learned on some of the real world projects that you are familiar with, that you have domain expertise in that particular topic, for example, if you love basketball, then try to apply the coding concepts to a basketball problem. Step number four, when you already have the basics in place, and as I already mentioned that you have applied some of the newfound knowledge on a problem that you are familiar with, in step four here, you're going to do this by iterating this over and over and over. And by doing so, it will help you to internalize the various concepts that you have learned in coding, and it will help you to realize at which particular situation, which function you should use, and also help you realize that there are more than one ways of doing things. And so in a nutshell, it's more or less learning the concept, applying the concept, rinse and repeat. 
And so let's hop on to step number five. The next step here is that you'll inevitably get stuck. And so what do you do in that situation? Well, the obvious way is you're going to copy the code, particularly the error message, and then you're going to paste it into a Google search bar, right? And then you're going to Google, and then you're going to find perhaps Stack Overflow or other coding forums that might provide some solutions to a similar coding error that you have encountered. And so Googling is probably one of the most common ways to help you to get unstuck. But what if Googling did not help you? What if there's no existing solution? out there. Well, the next step is to post a new question in a coding forum dedicated to a particular Python framework that you're perhaps learning to use or posting to Stack Overflow and seeing if other users could also help you out. And perhaps one of the most fundamental ways to help others to help you is that you should help others first by documenting your error as detailed as possible and also provide a minimum working example of your code so that other users could reproduce your error. And in doing so, they could help to find solutions to the error that you are encountering. So instead of just saying vaguely your error message, but also provide a minimum working example of your code as well, perhaps as a GitHub gist, or also to paste the code directly in the forum post. And so there are several best practices, and I'll provide you some links in the video description to help you out. In step number six, we're now going to move towards a way that will allow you to learn effectively. And that is to learn in public. It is to share your learning journey to the world. Perhaps you could write a LinkedIn post, you could tweet about it, you could write some Twitter threads sharing what knowledge that you have learned. So the great thing about learning in public is that for one thing, you're not learning alone. You're learning amongst peers of other aspiring coders. You're sharing useful knowledge by your Twitter threads or tweets that you share about some of the errors and how you encounter and how you solve them. And perhaps you could also share your newfound knowledge in the form of a blog post that you write about or create a tutorial video about it. So by doing these content creations, it also helps you to solidify your knowledge about the newfound topic that you're learning about. And at the same time, you're also helping a fellow coder as well. And so the satisfaction from helping others and also the satisfaction of knowing that you're not the only learner in the world will help you to be accountable for your learning progress and will help you to motivate you in learning and keeping the consistency going. And so I highly recommend it. And so this leads up to step number seven. How could you level up the knowledge that you have on these coding concepts? Well, it's by participating in coding challenges. And particularly in October, there's several hackathons and coding challenges out there that you could contribute to, that you could participate in. Or there are also data challenges that you could take part in, such as the one from Kaggle, where the aim is to apply your knowledge of machine learning building in order to perform some feature selection approaches or apply some fancy or traditional data wrangling, the feature selection, and see if you could achieve the best predictive model. And if you can, then you could win the grand prize, or at least make some friends along the way, and also have fun. Other coding challenges that you could take part in is simply to tweet using hashtags like 100 days of code or 66 days of data for those learning data science, or also the 30 days of Streamlit for those learning how to use Streamlit. And so finally, this brings us to step number eight, which is to lend a helping hand to others. By helping others, it also helps to solidify the knowledge that you have gained through your learning journey. It's also a way to pay it forward where you're helping others and others will help others as well. And so this will consequently lead to a domino effect where the community will be a great place to help and share knowledge and also to help people get unstuck, but not just taking knowledge from others by, for example, when you get solutions from Stack Overflow, and that's the end of the story, it's probably not because you're also going to, in a later point in time, be that person on the other end, helping the poster of the question on Stack Overflow. Because imagine for a moment, if that person who helped you to come up with a solution to solve your problem did not post the solution at the first place because he did not pay it forward, then that would mean that questions would get unresolved, right? And so by paying it forward, helping others, it has several folds of benefits. 
you get to solidify your knowledge. And on the receiving end, the person who had the problem will also get a solution that will help them to get unstuck. And so collectively, this leads to a positive and vibrant community where people come to share and learn. And another great thing is when you help others, it also helps you to realize what aspect of the problem or knowledge that you have gained that you are still lacking on. Because you wouldn't have known about your weakness or points to be improved on if you don't have the chance to apply that newfound knowledge. So by looking at the problem of others and applying your own solutions to that, you'll also become aware of the limitations on your own that will also help you to pinpoint which areas that you need to read up more on to improve upon. And so all in all, lending a helping hand to others not only help others, but also help you. And so that's all of the points on how I would learn to code if I had to start over. And I hope that you enjoyed watching the video. And please share in the comments down below some of the points that helped help you to learn coding that was not mentioned in this video. And I'd love to hear from you. And please drop a fire emoji so that I know that you're the real one. And please support the channel by smashing the like button, subscribing if you haven't already, and also turn on notifications so that you'll be notified of the next video. And as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science. And please enjoy the journey.